has Samuel Adams, but coming up next, we'll be interviewing a marvelous, not as well-known well -known person who had a colossal effect on the revolution and the world. Today, we, we will be interviewing a remarkable American writer, a vigorous patriot, an esteemed educator, and a political member of many boards and houses. Now, coming through, you, through to you live through our high-tech laser time machine, and here is the extraordinary, astounding, brilliant Governor William Morris. <laughs> Hello, Gubner, and welcome to A Blast from the Past. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Gubner. Like, when and where were you born? Well, let me see if I can recall. Oh, yes. I was born on the 31st of January in 1752 in the Morris House in at least what used to be called New York. So many things have changed or are different that I don't even know what's what. Is this thing I'm sitting on still called a chair? <laughs> yes, yes, calm down, Mr. Morris. Yeah, dude, calm down. We're on live television here. I'm no fool. Huh? <laughs> Apparently, dude used to mean fool. Oh, sorry, Governor, we didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> That's okay. But can someone here please explain to me what a live television is? <laughs> I'll tell you later. Yeah, let's move on to our next question. Gubina, can you tell us about your early life? Oh, okay, well, if you have not noticed, I have a peg leg due to a carriage accident. Oh, yes, I also burnt my arm at the age of 14. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yes. That's why I always wear sleeves. Is there anything unique about your family? Well, not much. We were one of the largest slave owners in the New York colony because we were very wealthy. We had French and English ancestors, and most of us enjoyed being in public service. Well, let's move on to our next question. Tell us about your family. Well, my parents were Sarah Gubiner and Louis Morris Jr. I had two half brothers. One was named after our father, Louis Morris, and the other was named Stace Long Morris, named after my mom's mother's last name. Louis signed the Declaration of Independence, and States was a major general for the British side. Kind of ironic, being on the Patriots team. My wife's name was Anne Carey Randolph of Virginia. We had a child together, a son we called Gubiner <coughs> Jr. I also had a nephew named Richard Valentine Morris. Anyone else in your family? Grandparents? Cousins? Extended family? Yes, I actually had two older sisters and two younger sisters. I also had two other half-brothers and a half-sister, all by my father. My father's parents were Louis Morris Gubiner and Isabella Grimm, and my mother's parents were Isaac Gubiner and Sarah States. Did you attend elementary school like we have to? <laughs> no, I didn't go to an elementary school. I had tutors when I was your age. By the way, you should improve your manners. School is good for all children. No, no it's not. <laughs> Where were you educated and what was it like? Well, if I can remember back to when I was in college, I will tell you. Oh yes, I enrolled at King's College, which I think is now known as Columbia College in Washington, D.C., when I was only 12 years old. As you know, I was very bright. I graduated in 1768, and then I studied law. Later on, I went for my master's, and part of that degree was in law. Here's an easy question for you. Are there any, any famous quotes you've ever said? Yes, I have said many quotes in my lifetime. Here's one. The rich will strive to establish the domination and enslave the rest. They always did, they always will. Unless by the power of the government we keep them in their proper spheres. Huh, I'm out of breath after saying that one. I never really realized how long it was. Let me see if I can remember another one. Oh yes, here's one. Give the votes to the people who have no property, who will be able to sell them to the rich, and who will be able to buy them. Those are all the quotes that I can remember. Interesting quotes. You're not considering you're a wealthy man yourself. Can you tell us about all the jobs or occupations you've had? Oh, that's a piece of pie. Well, what do I start with? I was a lawyer, a mercantile, as well as an educator, too. I also manufactured and shipped things to add on to everything else I've done. I also was an American <coughs> politician, a public official, American soldier, a member of the U.S. Senate, and even a minister for France. I also was in charge of the promotion of the Erie Canal. 
So, Mr. Morris, what got you into politics? Let me see. Oh, yes. I think I can recollect it. Back when the revolution was starting to happen, I started learning about politics, despite the reality that I had such an outstanding legal career. This is what led me into being a public official and a senator. What did you and others do at the Constitutional Convention? Well, we were just supposed to revise the Articles of Confederation, but we ended up scrapping the whole thing and starting with a fresh document. When others and I arrived at the Constitutional Convention, we began discussing new ideas for a government where no one feels so stronger than the other. We call these ideas checks and balances. We wanted to get away from a monarchy and move towards a democracy. I heard you had a big role at the convention. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Oh, yes, I can. You see, being such an amazing writer and all, I actually drafted most of the Constitution, with little help from others like Samuel Adams and James Madison. It took a long time, two and a half months to be exact. We had lots of arguments and disagreements. This made the process go so slowly. Have you made any other accomplishments in your life you were proud of? What legacy have you left behind? I do think I have some major accomplishments. First of all, I played in the promotion of the Erie Canal. Another is that I drafted most of the Constitution. But I have left a legacy too, though. You see, in New York and St. Lawrence County, I established myself as an important landowner. There they named the town of Boobner and the village of Boobner after me. I don't, there's also a U.S. ship called the SS Boobner Morris, which is also named after me. Sorry to tell you this, Governor, but... What? That U.S. Navy ship was used for scrap in 1973. <laughs> well, I hope it had a good run. <laughs> this is the last question for you, we have for you tonight, Mr. Morris. What caused your death? I haven't the foggiest idea how I died. <laughs> Do you know? Remember that whalebone you used as a catheter to clear your urinary tract? <laughs> oh my. Well, gentlemen, <laughs> thank you for telling me. This was truly a great experience. <laughs> and taking a break from your busy schedule. We learned lots about you today, like that you wrote the Constitution, and that you had many jobs. We also learned that you left behind, left behind a huge legacy for us to treasure. We appreciated now you coming in very much, and we hope you have a terrific day. Say hi to your wife for us. Well, I thank you for having me, but I best be on my way, then and goodbye. After this quick break, you will, hear, you will hear about another patriot, author, and philosopher, and outlaw who started the Green Mountain Boys, Ethan Allen. So stay tuned, and we will be right back. <laughs> 